Now there's a few important markers as you're moving around your timeline that are worth paying attention to. So I'm just gonna show you a few of those because they'll help in the accuracy of your edits as you're working in Final Cut Pro 10. So if I bring my playhead back to the beginning of my clip, you'll notice that on the left-hand side, I have this film strip icon, and that indicates that I'm right at the beginning of my clip. Now to move to the beginning and end of my edit, I can use the, the home or end button on the keyboard, and you'll find those uh, on a full keyboard on the right hand side below some of the function keys and it varies from keyboard to keyboard but you may find them um, just above the cursor keys on a laptop you won't always have the home and end button so sometimes you have to press function which will be on the bottom left of your laptop keyboard and the left hand key or function and the right hand key and that will move you to the beginning or end of your edit and you can see at the end of my edit i have this grayed out area on the right hand side with this kind of serrated line indicating that I'm right at the end of my edit. Now as we move between clips on our main storyline what you'll see and I'm just going to use the up and down cursors to move between clips you'll see either this L on the left hand side of my clip or if I move back one frame the backwards L or corner on the right hand side of my clip indicating that I'm at the very first frame or the very last frame of my clip. So if I move to the previous clip, you can see again this corner or L on the left-hand side. And if I move back one frame, I can see this L as well. Now where this is useful is if you want to make an edit um, right at the beginning of a clip and you see that L, it's a useful reference point because if you don't see it, then what might happen um, as you're editing clips down to the timeline is that you might actually split the clip. So for instance, if we select a clip here and we use the insert edit option here, then what's going to happen um, is although it kind of looks like we're at the beginning of our clip, we've left a tiny, tiny piece of footage in between those two clips, which means that when we play back, we're going to get a weird flash between those two clips. So using the up and down arrows um, so that you can see that L as you're editing is really useful for making sure that you don't make mistakes in your edit and end up with weird things happening on your timeline. I'm just going to highlight that clip and delete it. And then I'm going to use Shift and Z to zoom back to the entire timeline. So some useful shortcuts there for moving around your clips. You can also, if you're getting into the habit of using the J, K and L keys, use the semicolon and apostrophe key to move between the edit points as well. So you'll see um, if you're using J, K and L, then your little finger might land on the semicolon and we can use that to move backwards through our clips and we can use the apostrophe to move forwards through our clips okay so you can see we can navigate our timeline with jknl as we've covered previously to play backwards pause with k and play forwards with l and then we can use the semicolon and the apostrophe to move through to the edit points of those clips You'll also find that if you have snapping turned on, which you can turn on and off across on the right hand side, that as you move between clips, your playhead will automatically snap to those edit points. So if you like to drag around the timeline, then as long as you see this L, you know that you snapped exactly to an edit point um, of the clip and you'll see the frame at the beginning of that clip. So some useful tips for moving around the timeline there. And we'll cover some more options for making selections on the timeline and refining edits on the timeline as we go through this course.